don't know why. Hey, Michael. Hey. 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 I just watched your video. I enjoyed it. <laughs> oh. It's nice to see you it's again. Nice to see you again too. Okay. So let's start. Uh, first, I would like to be updated about your family. Uh, last time we have met, we knew you you had been through tough times because your uncle Gino has passed away. Yeah. But now we are looking for a joyful event in August. So, how's Grandpa Mitch and your family, and uh, how they are taking the new event? Yeah, we had a tough time because my 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 zeal butch was uh, we uh, called them the sunshine boys. Him and my grandfather, I mean, as you know, uh, came everywhere with me. And uh, when my grandpa lost his little brother, I think it was uh, a uh, a huge blow to him. I think a huge blow to his health, to his mind, to all of it. And uh, so uh, you know the. The curse became a blessing because of the fact that my wife became pregnant and, and it gave my, my Nono a lot of joy and uh, so he's very good, thank you for asking, he's great, um, really great. Uh, second, I have to bring to you greetings from uh, Fiorello. We had breakfast together and uh, he says uh, hello to you. Oh beautiful, hi Fiore, I miss him, uh, I hope he's good and his family's good. <laughs> oh yes he is. Okay, let's talk about the album. We have heard something different this time. Um, I'm wondering why you choose uh, only Bob Rock as a producer for the, for this new album, and not uh, also David as well. This is my sixth studio album, and uh, I felt that if I had made the same record, um, it would be boring for me. And not just that, but I think tedious for the audience. I really do. I feel like... Um, I've grown a lot. I feel like I, I, uh, I've earned the opportunity to, to make my record, to make the record I wanted to make. And the only way I could do that was by working with Bob Rock, because both of us uh, are loose. And uh, both of us are, we care more about the vibe than we do about the perfection. And uh, it's hard to find a producer who will let himself go and allow himself to to do, to do, to be so free in the studio and to do things live and to, to take chances and uh, he's the coolest dude I know and uh, so um, it's probably the most, um, I've never been so unsure about how a record would do commercially um, yet I'm sure that it's my best record, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things, the truth is uh, I had a baby. I have a baby coming. And when my, my when my wife told me she was pregnant, uh, it made me brave because uh, as much as I love my music and I'm passionate about it, uh, I didn't worry about what critics would think, and I didn't worry about how commercially it would or wouldn't be. I just worried about making a beautiful record and enjoying my life. What's the difference between um, David Foster and Bob Rock working with them? Uh, and how uh, David, you know, uh, uh, managed your decision? I mean, he's a, the man who, who made Michael Bublé. Uh, uh, David Foster is my brother, you know, he's my brother. And, uh, but he, you know, um, David has a, a certain way of producing, a very controlled way. David is a perfectionist. Uh, he's a genius. Uh, and everything has to be perfect. Perfect. I mean, the pitch, the time, the tone, the horns, the string, everything has to be perfect. He hears it all. Uh, he's like a machine. He's truly, he's, he's, a, he's a mathematical genius. But I hear music a different way. I, I like, I feel the music. And for me, Really, it was less important to have perfection and more important to have emotion and, and vibe. And I knew that at some point, and so did David. This wasn't me leaving David. This is David and I telling each other, I love you, you know, you're my brother, uh, but it's time to, to, to go. And um, when I made my Christmas record, I made half of the record with David and half with Bob Rock. And I just love what Bob Rock did. I mean, uh, for me, perhaps Bob Rock isn't 
the mathematical genius that David Foster is. But what, where David is a genius mathematically, Bob Rock is a genius because he feels it so much from his heart. Um, and I mean, um, everything was about vibe. How good it feel, you know, how does it feel? Not, is the, is the vocal sound perfect? Is the time perfect? I mean, the truth is when I made the Christmas record with David, I asked him uh, if he would make the record I wanted to make. I said, I want to make a record like my idols. I want to make a Motown record. I want to go live off the floor with mistakes, with everything. And David, for that record, he said, okay, I will do this because I love you, but I will never do it again. <laughs> he, he said, I will never do it again. I need to have control. I need to, that's David though. That's, he needs to have that control. And, uh, and Bob is just very loose. And he's like me where we would, we would do a take and Abe Laborio, you know, a wonderful drummer would be playing and maybe it wasn't perfect, but we would say, shit, that feels so good, that feels good. And, uh, or in a vocal, um, most of my vocals uh, that weren't live for the pop songs uh, were taken with me in the control room, not in the studio with the cans. Uh, like, uh, like Bono, Bono records the same way. And, uh, when Bob was making the Metallica records, they would, they would work the same way, where I would sing uh, with, the, with the band when we put down the track, and then we said, okay, later I will, I will record the, the vocals and do a vocal uh, track. And months later, in every song, we ended up coming back to the first demo and using that as the vocal. So, Bob Rock is the dude. Have you ever seen The Big Lebowski? <laughs> I mean, when I met you, when I met you first, 10 years ago, I was a little boy, you know? I was just learning and trying to find myself, and I was fighting for my career. I was fighting for respect and fighting so that I could prove to you that I was an artist. And I'm a man now, and I feel it. I really do. I mean, I'm confident as who I, I'm confident in who I am as an artist. I'm content in who I am as a human being, and um, really, I feel like, I feel like I deserve to be able to make this record, because, you know, um, I get to write songs now that, and sing songs that uh, a man can sing, because I've gone through it now. I've, I've hurt, and I've been in love, and I've been heartbroken, and I've gone through a lot of things, and. Um, and now I can really start making great music. You sing with Brian uh, Adams in one song. Uh, tell us something about your friendship. Brian is like my stepbrother because um, my manager's name is Bruce Allen and he started managing Brian when he was 17. Brian was just a boy and uh, I started, uh, Bruce started to manage me at 25. And so we are like his sons, really, like his kids. And so we became, uh, you know, close. And for me, this was amazing because when I was a little boy, uh, Brian was, I mean, he was my favorite. I mean, uh, he, was this, he was a Canadian, a Vancouverite from my city who uh, became a huge success. And for me, this was inspirational. And I loved his voice, you know? I love his voice. I, I wish I could sing more. <laughs> more like him. And when I did the duet, uh, and we wrote, when we wrote the song, I, I thought that our voices were so different, but I thought that they would work nicely together. So I am a, I'm a big fan of Brian. And what was funny is when we recorded it that day, um, when we sang together, it was one thing. But then every time I would sing alone, my parts alone, um, <laughs> Brian would photograph me the whole time. He drove me crazy. Because every time I was singing, he had to put. Because I think Brian, I'm not sure if he loves music or uh, being a photographer more. Uh, you remember before that uh, we have met 10 years ago, that was when your career exploded. So uh, this break with David Foster hide in some ways uh, a desire, a wish to break free from the pressure of success, to take your career in a more relaxed way. Uh, and uh, you have been touring almost everywhere in the last years. 
Are you planning to come back in Italy? You know, I, I, I used to really put the, the pressure on myself with the career, but as I've gotten older, I've, I've, I've never lost the fire inside, you know. Um, the truth is, I think I have just become far more trusting of my instincts. And if you ask David Foster, uh, he'll tell you that there's probably no artist that he's worked with that knows more about who he is than me. And he'll tell you that. And I've become very, very sure of myself. Not, a, not in an egotistical way, but who I am and what I, what I love and how I can make it. Um, listen, I, I, I'm still hungry. And I haven't done it. I haven't uh, made it to the, to the place that I think is possible for me. Uh, I think that I can dominate uh, more countries in a, in a bigger way. Um, and I'll try my best, you know, but um, it's more important for me to be a good family man than it will be to be a big star. You know what? I don't want to be... I don't want to be a movie. You know, I keep watching these movies, these biographies of these famous singers and actors that we know. And every movie is the same. They're, they're young, they fight, they become famous and successful, they meet the woman they love, they get married, they have a child, and they leave them for their career. And only years and years later do they look back with regret and wish that they would have paid more attention to their child and their family. And I don't want to be in that movie. You know, I want my movie to be different. I want both. And maybe I can't have both, but if I can't, I can't. You know, that's, that's, that will be my lot in life. And I never, never meant to neglect uh, Italy, if I did. Uh, it's difficult, you know. I go to, to 42 countries, or 44 countries to play. And... Uh, it's hard. There's only 365 days in a year, and uh, I, t I want to play everywhere, you know, and um, <clears throat> I try my best, but it's, sometimes it's, it's difficult. I, sometimes there are countries that I, I don't get to hit enough, and, uh, you know, what I tried to do this time was to, to centralize concerts. So, in London, um, instead of me playing 40 shows across, I tried to do 10 nights, so we do 10 nights at the O2, so I can play to close to 300,000 people in three, in three weeks, and hopefully they'll come to me, and it makes it easier for me to, to go. And I changed my touring schedule, so it made it difficult for my manager and my agents uh, to make as much money as they want, <laughs> because uh, I changed my schedule so that I could be with my, my wife more. And my wife is a... Is a, is, a, is a wonderful actress, you know. She's a very successful uh, woman, and uh, a career woman, and her career is important to her, and it's important to me. Um, so that means that sometimes I can't work as much because I need to be with her. You know, I mean, I was with her, she just made a movie for Rayuno here, and I lived with her here in Rome and in Trento for, uh, for three months, three months or something, and uh, for me, it's worth it because uh, in, in English they say happy wife, happy life, <laughs> you know. And can I go, before I go, can I say that, I, firstly, really, thank you for coming. So I thank you for your patience and your time to come down here. I think this record will speak for itself. I don't think I need to say too much because I think the proof will be in the pudding, as they say. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.